to me, there's no such thing as, as a black woman in Ghana. I'm a woman in Ghana. Living in the US, all of the seats are taken, all the big brands are there. And here, you have an opportunity to create a seat at the table. It's significant to, to know where you belong and where you came from. For Angela Matthews and Cindy Myers, this morning marks the start of a trip they never thought they would make. Grandparents who wish they could have gone back, but we're doing it for them. The sisters are getting ready to travel to Ghana in West Africa for the first time. <laughs> this group could have visited this country any time but they chose this year. Ghana is encouraging more descendants of the slave trade to retrace their roots. They've called 2019 the year of return. It's 400 years after the first enslaved Africans arrived in what is now the US. This is Cape Coast Castle. It was one of the most important African bases for British slave traders during the 18th century. Historians believe at least 12 million people were shipped from West Africa to plantations in the Americas and the Caribbean. As we walk down the dungeons, this is the real dungeon in Ghana. I never thought I would make this trip. Never, never. My sister and I are the first generation to make it here. And it's just, it's just truly amazing. Truly amazing. For Angela and her sister, the trip to the castle and its dungeons holds a special meaning. They recently took a DNA test and discovered that they are of Ghanaian heritage, meaning their ancestors may have been held in these cells. I am so grateful to be here and to be here with my ancestors. It gives me a great joy and I feel like I'm home. And thank you and gratitude to every ancestor of my bloodline. Thank you for being strong enough to make it. I'm sorry you had to go through this. This place is very saddening to see how they were treated so inhumane. I mean, who would do that? Why? Money? It's just very saddening. Enslaved Africans were pushed through the door of no return and onto waiting ships. For many, it would be the last time they would see the continent. Being here, taking my shoes off, getting into the water, the Atlantic Ocean, I felt at peace, I felt at home. I felt like all of my ancestors, we were reunited, and it was just a wonderful feeling. For some black Americans, Ghana is more than a holiday destination. This is a very busy uh, hustle and bustle. Right down the street is Oxford Street, the main street where people go out. Yeah. Ghana's economy is attracting young people who are searching for more than their identity. My name is uh, Voltaire Exodus um, and I'm a consultant and I'm a founder of the company We Up. I've been here five weeks and uh, I've, you know, when I hit the ground, uh, I really tried to build my network as much as possible, going out to different uh, spaces and events. You are new in Ghana, you're not really familiar with the African print, so I'm trying to like, combine things that you can wear and then wear in Ghana and wear it out there. 
But why would someone who has never even visited Ghana before choose to move there? For me, being in business, it's an opportunity to be a part of creating a city and a, a country that's emer emerging. So living in the U.S., all of the seats are taken, all the big brands are there, and we're here, the cement is wet, and you have an opportunity to create a seat at the table. Everybody is born with a gift. The question is, how much do you water that cement potential? And in our but he admits it's not just about the money. The main differences of my life in Ghana and the U.S. is uh, the peace. Ghana is a very peaceful place. This is where you get comments from your friends like, be safe, right? And they actually live in Chicago, Illinois. There's a lot of violence in, in the city of Chicago. And so the irony is, is someone in Chicago is asking me to be safe in a place that's peaceful, but that's partly tied to the imagery, imagery that they're fed every day. This is Lakeisha Ford. Five years ago, she decided to move to Ghana to start a new life. And with it came a new sense of identity. To me, there's no such thing as, as a black woman in Ghana. I'm a woman in Ghana. We are all black. <laughs> I don't see color here because I'm a part of the majority. And I think that's a privilege and a luxury. She was born and brought up in the US and her move to Ghana was about starting her own business. But it became more than that. This place, as in the African continent, specifically Ghana, has um, restoration for people of color in the diaspora. You know, I want to show people that this is not just an alternative, but a real option to live your life and be successful. Yeah, this is it. This is the turn. We found two partners that would support us with finding... Lakeisha has no plans to move back to the U.S. and she's encouraging others to join her. Any black person that is in the diaspora, a trip needs to be made to the African continent. There's almost this like un, undefined closure that happens. You didn't even know you needed this. You don't even know you need closure in a certain light, but coming here, you get it. And there's almost an alignment that happens. Back at the tour group, Angela, Cindy, and the other travelers have also been able to discover a different side to Ghana. The country estimates the number of tourists wanting to find out about their heritage will increase by up to 40% this year. For Angela, retracing her roots has changed how she looks at her home country. And this time and all the things that are going on with our current president, it's significant to, to know where you belong and where you came from. So for me, coming back here, um, reuniting with my ancestors, um, makes me feel at home. I have a culture, I have a people, I belong. That's the significance it is for me.